NBA Ooh. celebrating its 75th anniversary, and right now on NBA.com, you can go check out tributes to some signature oh, moves man. that have taken place over the last 75 years. And one of the best of the best is the Magic Man, Magic Johnson at 6'10", doing what, what you little guys are oh. supposed to be doing. I, you know, the great thing about Magic, and you can see it, when I think about him or watch his highlights, I smile. That guy puts, gave me so much joy as a kid watching how he played the game. I had never seen anything like Magic. Like, you just hadn't seen that. Like, a guy that big with that vision, handling the basketball. Like, we'd seen big guys that could dribble in a straight line, <laughs> right? But yeah. we had never seen anybody like Magic Johnson. He was just a joy to watch. I don't know that Muhammad Ali obviously had a huge impact as well in my life, but I don't know that anybody had the impact because I played this game that Magic Johnson had. It gave me the joy in watching him the way Magic did. My favorite player of all time, Magic Johnson. I mean, you watch him play. My middle name is Irvin. You watch him play, man. Greg said it brought smiles to your face. And then someone of that size able to do the things that he was able to do. And I, I laugh when I sit here on set with Isaiah Thomas because we laugh about it all the time. He always says Magic Johnson was not a point guard. Right. There's no point guard 6'10", 245 pounds. He, did, he could do things with his size that little guys couldn't do. But the thing that was amazing to me, as big as he was, Greg, he thought and played the game like a little guy. Yeah, he did. It, he played the game as if he was 6'2 until he needed to be 6'10. Yeah. That was the thing special about him. He played the game like a little guy. He thought like a little guy. But when he needed to be the big guy, we saw him play center when they won a championship without Kareem. He could revert and do that. And, and you mentioned it. It brings a smile to your face. His smile, oh, right? And smile. and he just played the game with joy. We talk about teams that win usually play with joy. Yeah. He always played with joy. Yeah, th his ability to just be out there. Like, that that's the thing. And I, I wish everybody could experience that feeling of doing something that you love so much, that brings so much joy to you, that it becomes infectious. Because, like, I always loved the game, and I would watch but I never watched and smiled. You know, I'm just watching, like, right. and enjoying it. Right. But when I'm watching Magic, man, I'm, I'm like, it got emotional. You're just so into it. And I knew not. I remember watching him against Larry Bird in the championship <laughs> game, tape delayed. Right. You know, like, I had never seen him play before. That was the first time was to watch that championship game because back when we were growing up, it wasn't no internet. <laughs> it wasn't no cable. Right. You know, sports weren't, it, it, especially basketball, wasn't as big a deal back then. And so, you know, it was just a normal game. He brought flair and the dramatic to the game. My well, very first game against the Lakers, I was the oldest rookie in the league, 26 years old, had been playing in Europe, playing the CBA, minor leagues, played in Europe. Playing against the Lakers, walk out there for the jump ball. Magic Johnson walks over to me and gives me a hug and says, I read your story. Yeah. You are, you are you're an inspiration. It took you all these years to get here. Welcome to the NBA. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you don't understand what that Magic Johnson knew my name, knew my story, and knew what I went through. The fact that he welcomed me like that and yeah. said those things and embraced me, he's my favorite player of all time. Awesome. Signature moves part of this with, with the no look pass the Magic mm -hmm. had. So for me, it kind of translated to Jason Kidd growing up uh, as a Net fan, seeing how he was a much shorter and different player, but but had the same type of magic, if you will, yeah. to find a teammate open or not. And I think we're seeing that tar start to come back. It, yeah. it, it has become the golden age of the point guard once again with some really great playmakers, but we're seeing it with guys, and I'm not by no means comparing these guys to Magic Johnson, but their ability to, to find their teammate at any spot in the court. Luca, LaMelo, I mean, are these guys showing you flashes of that no-look pass that Magic is able to find guys with? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you, you got to throw LeBron in that category. Yeah, good You point. know, like, that. those guys, it's an advantage when you have the size, but it's also harder because you're, it's, it's harder for you to deal with pressure because, like, as a, as a smaller, quicker guard, I could go generally up and pressure a big guy in the backcourt and try to take away some of that momentum. That was the other thing that was unique to these guys and to Magic is that you couldn't pressure them. Like, you would think you could, but you could not pressure those guys. They were just unique, man, special talent. These kids are special yeah. today, and Magic was the guy who really revolutionized the game. Like, like, we talk about what Steph has done in terms of changing the game, Wilt and Kareem to a certain extent. Magic changed it, too. Right. He, he really did because it changed how we viewed bigs.
Think there had it. never been a guy like that before. Right. Think about this. It's two players that have not been able, people cannot replicate. Magic Johnson and Michael Kareem. Jordan. Think and about all the players. And Kareem. That, and Kareem. All the players that have come through, all these great players, they cannot do that. We haven't found one guy that could do what those three guys have done. Because we've still been looking for a 6'10", 6'11", point guard, haven't we? Mm.